David Fredrickson, Executive Vice President of Oncology Business Unit at AstraZeneca, is joining us. Juliana does stick around for this interview as well. Uh, good morning, sir. Can you tell us a little bit about the findings you've had from this trial? Good morning, and it's really wonderful to be with you. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm joining you from San Francisco because later this week, we're going to have an opportunity to see the results from the Propel study. And Propel is a study looking at the combination of Limparza and a medicine called abiraterone in men with advanced prostate cancer. And the reason this is so important is that prostate cancer, as you mentioned, is the second most common cancer in men. And unfortunately, when it becomes advanced and when it spreads beyond the prostate, uh, it becomes life-threatening and moves from a manageable condition to one for which there's a real sense of urgency to treat. What we saw in the Propel study was a reduction in the risk of progression or death by a third for men who were treated with the Limparza combination. And what that meant for patients in the study was that on average, men were able to live without their disease worsening by over two years. And this is the longest that we've ever seen within this advanced prostate cancer frontline setting. Yeah, talk to me a little bit more about the way that this sort of slows down disease progression, but also the quality of life factors with Propel. What did you find in terms of the respondents, the people taking part in the survey, in terms of how they were able to manage the symptoms? It's a really critical point as we take a look at the decision that oncologists are making as they think about uh, treatments that, that, that they're evaluating for their patients. It's always a trade-off between efficacy and quality of life. And in the Propel study, what we saw was that we were able to significantly delay disease progression. And in fact, uh, it was by more than eight months to the 24 months that I had described to you before. But it also showed that the potential for this combination to be able to be used without having a adverse impact on patient quality of life. And this is really, really important uh, for patients to be able to live without their disease worsening while also maintaining their quality of life on this therapy. Um, and we're pleased to see those results from within this study. David, uh, good morning. It's Juliana here. Um, and clearly, this is a, a potentially major opportunity and, and major um, source of, of good news for a prostate cancer patients. What exactly is the addressable market for this drug? And where do you stand on regulatory approvals? Well, this is a really area of high unmet need and a sizable patient population. We know that in 2020, that there were approximately 375,000 men across the globe uh, who died from advanced prostate cancer. And so this is a sizable uh, portion of the global population that's living with cancer. In terms of our discussions with health authorities, this week will be the first real unveiling of the data at the American Society of Clinical Oncology gastro uh, excuse me, genital urinary uh, society meeting. And then we're already in the midst, as you can imagine, of discussing these data with health authorities across the globe and look forward to approvals uh, based on these data uh, as soon as later this year. 